Hi, I'm Wayne Parman. Welcome to Texas Short Stories. In Chinaberry Shade, Nick Field rides from Dallas to Kansas City with his mom and dad's good friend Mr. Walker, taking his grandma Kate's body along for burial. His little sister Maggie rides in their parents' Chevy. The story begins this way. Grandma Kate was a very particular woman. She donned a dress for dinner and fancied classical piano. She acquired the best mahogany furniture and wool rugs for her Victorian house and expected children to obey when ordered. She mourned her long-deceased husband and hankered to be buried next to him. Inconveniently, she expired in Dallas, which was 800 miles from him and her wish. Nick has to grow up in the year before Kate dies. His dad gives him a job. Between our porch and the garage, a mossy green spindly trunk chinaberry tree poked its small leaves above the roof line. Its waxy yellow berries litter at our red driveway. Dad performed a miracle with that tree. Part of the marvel was that Mom got what she wanted so quickly, shade for the kitchen and the porch where she spent so much time. Dad's motto seemed to be, do your best to make things better, especially with your hands. Dad's miracle also gelled because I changed. I didn't want a job, but he wanted me to help him th make things better with my hands. I helped him plant the tree and he charged me with watering it. I now was responsible for part of our house. Dad was depending on me to water this little tree so Mom would have shade. I hitched up my shorts and grabbed the hose with both hands. Those roots were going to have plenty of water. After Kate dies, Nick is thrilled to ride with Mr. Walker in the hearse, but Maggie will have nothing to do with it. In Muskogee, we stopped to fill up at a gas station. Mr. Walker and Dad went to pay for the gas while Mom went to the bathroom. I was alone in the hearse with Grandma, and Maggie was in the Chevy. I stuck my head and out the window and motioned her to come over. She shook her head, pouting her lips. Oh, come on. She climbed over the seat, opened the front door, and shuffled over to me. Do you want to see Grandma? No, I do not. Oh, come on. Nobody's looking. I don't want to look. If you're so excited, you look. No, just get in the back seat here. I opened the door and crawled up into the seat. Come on. Reluctantly, Maggie climbed in beside me, but sat looking forward. I kneeled next to her, looking at the blanket-covered stretcher. See? It's not so scary. Look! You can see the outline of her head and her feet sticking up. Shut up! I don't want to hear it! Mr. Walker says there's a ghost riding with him sometimes back here. Shut up, or I'll call Mom! Look, there's no one here. There's no ghost today. I won't look! I'm going back there. She jammed her hands harder over her ears and squeezed her eyes shut. I climbed over the back seat and squatted on my heels next to the stretcher. See, I yelled into her hands, there's only a blanket over her. Maggie didn't move. I'm going to pull it back. Here goes. I reached across, across Grandma's head and grasped the blanket with both hands. If you want to know how it ends, Go back to TexasShortStories.com and click on Purchase Texas Short Stories. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy Nick's adventures.